So, Coach, uh, not the result you wanted in the game against Spring Mills, a 43 nothing loss, but looking through the article from the journal, seems like you guys uh, presented some challenges, at least for them, early in the game and, and did some good things, uh, but unfortunately couldn't get on the scoreboard or make it a little bit closer. So what did you kind of take away from it? Uh, we took some positives out of it. Uh, defensively, we tried some stuff, and we had success. Uh, later in the game, we were trying to make stuff happen, so we gave up two quick scores there towards the end. Uh, offensively, we didn't take advantage of what Spring Mills was presenting us. And to be honest, that's a really good defense that Spring Mills has. Uh, but we took some positives out. We sat in the film room, and we're on our bye week this week, so we're trying to fix stuff. And we talked with Coach Law already, even though it'll be played uh, later into Day's show. He gave some high praise to your staff and your team this year for being one of the uh, best Washington teams for sure. Just tell us a little bit about, I guess, how much that praise means to you even after the uh, result of the game. Well, Coach Law and Coach Henson are doing an amazing job at Spring Mills. And teams have said it we've talked to different head coaches we played this year uh we're just trying to change culture here uh it, we're washington high school uh we want to be relevant in football and we're just going to keep busting our butts to give the kids the best opportunities to uh, succeed on friday nights another thing we took away from that interview was it seemed like you guys were able to get some pressure on them with some different blitzes um how important has the blitz been in terms of your defensive success this year it's it's been key. Uh, we uh, we're a high pressure defense. Uh, we we take risks, high risk, high reward. Sometimes it just doesn't work out in your favor. But when you're playing teams like Spring Mills in Martinsburg, and later on, it, once the playoffs get here, depending on your matchup, we got to put pressure on the quarterback and make him uncomfortable. Uh, hopefully, so he can make mistakes. So the pressure game's been big. We're aggressive defense. As you mentioned, it's the bye week for you guys before your next game against Martinsburg. Uh, what are some of the things that you guys are focused in on this week? Are you just focused in on yourself? Are you focused in on Martinsburg, given extra time to prepare? Is it a mix, potentially? Uh, we're focusing on ourselves this week. Uh, we have some mistakes and stuff we have to clean up. Uh, we're banged up a little bit, so it's nice to have that one-week reprieve now here in the middle of the season. But we're focusing on ourselves. I mean, I would be lying if I tell you we weren't, like, thinking about Martinsburg and doing some stuff with Martinsburg. And, Coach, uh, with that extra week to prepare for them, is, how does that help, and, and what are some of the things that you're looking to work on this week? It gives us an opportunity to look at some of the stuff they've done to us in the past and what they've done this year. Uh, again, we're trying to clean up stuff that we we do that we're supposed to be doing really well. We hang our hat on, and right now sometimes we make those mistakes. So, I mean, it, it's always a bonus when you, you can get the bye week in the middle of the season. Our biggest thing is we're beat up a little bit. We, we've had a, a tough run of six games, and we're getting healthy, and we're trying to get ourselves better. What was the message to your team after that Spring Mills game and it being kind of lopsided? Uh, I told the kids that Spring Mills, we, we in a three-week span, we were playing the number one, number two team in the state. We, we got Martinsburg in next Friday. Uh, this is the measuring stick. It, we we want to see where we're at as a program. We're in year two, and I, I think we're doing pretty good here. Uh, we can only – the ceiling's unlimited for us. And I told the kids, I was like, sometimes you got to take it on the chin. We got to learn from our mistakes. And in order to get better and possibly move on when we have a, because uh, everybody's making playoffs this year, but we get that playoff opportunity. We had that playoff type uh, atmosphere last Friday with Spring Mills, and we're probably going to have it again with Martinsburg. But they're the top two teams right now in 4A, and Martinsburg's been the top team for decades now, it seems, in West Virginia. So every time we have an opportunity to play teams like that, it's a great measuring stick to see what where we're at and to show the kids that this is the level we have to get to to compete for state championships. Coach, you mentioned still having some mistakes and some areas that you feel like you guys should excel on. Uh, where are you seeing those mistakes? Uh, 
our offensive line struggled a little bit with the pressure Spring Mills was bringing us uh, against us. We were trying to clean that up with communications. Uh, defensively, just this mental mistakes where we're not communicating very well on the back end. Uh, a couple times here and there, we, we miscommunicated. and We had guys doing two different things, which isn't good for you when you're on defense, especially playing a talented team like Spring Mills. It's been a while, even though it's not Martinsburg week yet, since you guys have scored against Martinsburg. Uh, what are your early s- thoughts on this year's Martinsburg team and the challenge that they bring for you guys? Uh, Mar- Martinsburg's Martinsburg. They have an aggressive defense. Coach Hash is constantly moving the fronts and bringing different blitzes and confusing quarterbacks and offenses. Uh, offensively, Coy Fagan is a player. Uh, they've got guys at running back. They've got guys at wide receiver that could hurt us. Uh, it's it's going to be a challenge next week when we play them. But, again, we have an opportunity to play another really good team in the state and get to see how much better we've gotten and see where we need to get to in order to compete later on in the playoffs. I know you mentioned earlier the fact that you have the number one and number two teams in the uh, state in a three-week period with the buy-in between, and I know you can't really change it, but if you could, would you, or do you prefer kind of having that here in the middle of the season back-to-back as a larger measuring stick for your program? Uh, it doesn't bother me. I, I kind of like it. The fact that we had the buy that was wedged in between the two teams this year, uh, I think helps a little bit. But I, I have no problem with it. We're in the EPAC. I believe the EPAC is one of the best conferences in the state of West Virginia when it comes to football. So we know we're going to have be up for a challenge and a fight each week when we hit our EPAC schedule. All right, Coach, last question then, our fun question uh, for the week before we let you go. In your opinion, what are the greatest strengths and weaknesses in being a football coach? Greatest strength is you get to be a leader and you can teach kids life lessons and make them better men. Uh, weaknesses, you don't get a whole lot of sleep. <laughs> All right, there you go. Well, thank you for the time, Coach. I appreciate it, guys.